Here, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the 6th Round Podcast, episode 16. It's a Sunday, but you guys gonna be watching it on a Monday. We had fights yesterday. It's a, I'm pretty sure it's a start to, I believe, 12 weeks in a row for the UFC of non-stop fights. Um, so, this, this, <laughs> this is gonna be some pretty good shit. We're gonna have a lot of shit going on, so let's go. Yeah. Either way... Another UFC fight night going on this weekend from the Apex, a good old Apex show, you know what I mean? It's the classic. Mm. But it's uh we actually had some flyweights headline it. The first, um the last time I'm pretty sure flyweights headlined uh like a fight night card. Um it was like 2018, 2019. It was like Sergio Pettis and uh like Brandon Moreno or something. It, it was like it's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a hot minute. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, UFC trying to cut them for a while and just trying to get everything back and going, but we had Kai Car of France, Amir Albazi, two fighters in the flyweight division that are guaranteed to give you some good fun. But we didn't really get that much good fun from their fight overall last night. Yeah. No. Um, Kai was probably a bit more hesitant after his loss to fucking Moreno, and Amir probably just respects Kai, and it's like a, you know, his first fight up in the top five, just finally getting there, and he probably didn't want to go mm-hmm. fuck it up, just being too overconfident. Um, yeah, didn't get the normal Amir or Kai from them. <laughs> nah, yeah, for sure. No, nah, yeah, and, like, the first round, for the most part, was it just felt like a complete feeling out process for most of the round. Like, it yeah. just felt like they were, it was just both of them, yeah, being hesitant, being not uh, going after it, really. And then, like, after that, it was still close in the second. Uh, Mir getting probably maybe edging the third, but then, like, the fourth and fifth, Kai really felt like he took complete control of that fight. Yeah, for sure. So, because, yeah, watching it live, um, one and two, those were definitely the closest rounds to me. Um, and because, yeah, it just, it really just didn't feel like a Kai fight at all. He wasn't moving forward that much. Like, he, like, he was trying to put combinations together, mm. but he wasn't really able to land too much, like, too big. Um, and it, it was kind of just interesting going back and, like, seeing the stats afterwards, how, like, just, you know, like, him outlanding, mm-hmm. uh, Amir, like, one and two, like, pretty solidly. And because, yeah, like, watching it yeah. live i just it just felt like amir was doing a little bit more um but the second round it was definitely closer i feel like you know kai edged that one a bit the third one you know that's where he got the takedown had the back for a while you know was looking for the sub so like amir easily yeah. won the third four and five should have easily been kai oh yeah i so with the fucking scorecards I was so disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know if disappointed is the right word because you can only expect so much from the judging, you know? Um, it's not like it's rare that we get fucked up yeah. decisions or decisions that we don't agree with or just mm-hmm. the majority don't agree with. So I shouldn't say that, but I was, I was just upset because honestly, I had Kai for that 100%. Like, I thought that he had round one and two i know that they were close but i gave them to him round three was a clear amir yeah but even if you wanted yeah. to give round uh one to amir cool but like two three i mean two four and five i 100 percent have for kai and it's like yeah fucking who did this shit chris lee yeah. chris lee and so that's why it's funny because it was like uh so round two um or it was round, round one. two three yeah. yeah round two three and five all of them had in common um yep. round two and three all of them gave to amir and that's why i kind of thought that was funny because i thought amir did better like i thought round one was more arguable for amir in my opinion than mm-hmm. like round two um but so you know and and then round five clearly that was kai's round that wasn't even argument yeah. how the fuck did chris lee give round four to amir how in the fuck did I, this happen? Because honestly, I have no idea. It was like Ginger said that round four and five that Kai really just took control of the fight and it was like clear his rounds. That's why this shit was so disappointing because it's like yeah, round four, a clear round to Kai. That was the shit given to Amir that gave him the split decision. And it's like, bro, that round wasn't the round to give to him. 
I don't know what he was watching then. Like, And that's why it's so frustrating because, like, with that being the round that caused it, you know, to be, like, the deciding uh-huh. factor where if, like... Because, cause yeah, like, to me, when Amir got the decision, I was... Like, I thought Kai did enough to win it, but I wasn't too upset because I did think that round one and two was close. So when he got it, I was like, yeah. okay, j- the judges gave him one through three, Kai got four and five. Yep. And then to see that that's just not what happened, it's just, like... yeah. Right, the fact that the one card that gave it to fucking Albazi, yeah, it was round four. And because like Sal, Sal D'Amato had one through three, you know, so that no, 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 so no, that's yeah, like yeah, you yeah. know, yeah, that's that's that's, that's what I'm reasonable. saying with Chris, like yeah. you know, just that one card for him, it's like, bro. And I yeah. feel like if anyone had it, the the I feel like Mike Bell had the best card with uh, Kai winning one, four, and five. Just in general, I just feel like Kai had either won round one or round two, and he he took four and five easily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, he won three of those rounds, without a doubt, in my opinion. And in the opinion of 19 reporters out of the 21 that oh, yeah. scored. And, and like, so, that's why it, it's just... it be, Because it's just, it's just another one of those fights where... It it was a close fight. You you know, most people had it going one way, but in reality, mm-hmm. with how the fight played out, how, like, you know, just, you have three judges watching it from fixed angles, like, they're, you know, yep. they only see what they see, and so it's like, you know, giving it to um Amir isn't the worst thing ever, but it's just because it's like, yeah, everyone else sees it, like, the other way, and then it just happens to be, you know, two of the two of the three judges see it, you know, like, towards the other way, and then with mm-hmm. one bad, like, scorecard on top of this it, would be it's the just, one like, yeah. where people say, like, a robbery that you can almost agree with because the round itself was the robbery. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, like, I can... Not the like, whole fight overall, the because, like, it's different is... when it comes down to, like, the entire fight being close and it could really go either way, and you're like, damn, yeah. who did they give it to? And I understand what you're saying that this was like that, but when it comes to that round, that round was a robbery from For Kai, 100%. and that's what swayed yeah. the entire thing. So that's where it's like, bro, like Chris, you just fucked it up, like. Yeah, it. Yeah. I. Yeah, no, because like, that's the thing. Like, if Chris had Sal's card, I wouldn't call this robbery. It just more leans towards it, just because Chris scored round four. <laughs> For Kai, for uh, Amir Abazi, when he clearly did not win that round at all. I, I don't have them up, like, right here, but I'm pretty sure the stats, it was, like, 37 to 5 in favor of Kai, like, in significant yeah. strikes that round. Like, no, Kai it had a takedown, insane. Amir didn't have a takedown, he went 0 for 2 on takedowns. Like, the control time was basically nothing, you know, it was, like, 23 seconds to 11 seconds. Like, it, it was just... Like watching it live and then looking at the numbers after the fact, it's like there there's no way that you can Yeah, like, round four significant yeah. striking, twenty seven to five in favor okay, of Kai. 27. Um Kai got the takedown and yeah, had control time. I mean Amir had twenty three seconds, Kai had eleven, but yeah. like whatever, you know, he got the but takedown, almost, he outstruck him, you know, it was significant yeah. strikes at that. Like it just there was no reason for Amir to have gotten that one. Nah, he was over no, exactly. two in takedowns on it, like he was his total strikes. He was outlanded twenty nine to seven, and Kai almost landed as many strikes, total strikes, as Amir threw total strikes in that round. Yeah, <laughs> no knockdown, no reversals, no like no real sub attempts. Like he had the one sub attempt that's on here, but yeah, but I don't think it was even four. close. Yeah, that was in that round was three. just straight up round three. Yeah. No, there's a subtype in round four, apparently, that they counted. Oh, no, I'm looking at it right now. It's not here. I'm on round four. And it's saying one sub attempt. <laughs> so uh, that's my reason I'm... I don't know. So, uh, that's weird. I don't know why I'm saying know. that, but anyway. <laughs> zero, so no sub attempts. Like, yeah, nothing. It, like, he yeah, had nothing. There, I, there's just absolutely no reason. I did no think the sub was weird, because I don't remember it, but I was like, maybe I just missed the missed it. it was like a quick little like thing and i just missed it or whatever but no even then like he didn't hide <laughs> there's nothing within the stats to warrant him winning that round and from everything that i actually do remember seeing in that round because i had went back and watched the round nothing <laughs> there's nothing yeah, yeah there, there's just no reason it 
like i don't know with that one because you know like like you're saying with the whole robbery thing you know when you look at the fight overall it's like you know you it's hard to like just say that was a robbery because it was a close fight but when you just look <laughs> at that round that's, that's why i'm saying like kai yeah. was robbed of that round and that was the mm-hmm. swaying round though so that's why like yeah it, you know what i mean like he was robbed of the decision it it's just, like <laughs> i just don't know what the fuck like it, did he just go to the bathroom or something during that? Like, did like, he just think that all of the punches that Amir was throwing were landing? Like, right, yeah. I just, I just don't know. But either way, it it just sucks because yeah, Kai coming off that loss to Moreno in his last one for the interim title, he was ranked number three going into this, and now loses a, like that decision to number seven. So it's just like, yeah, I ju- it just sucks for Kai. It, it really it's does. just, it's just hard to see. I mean, Amir, he's now 5-0 and in the UFC, gets a close decision over him, and he's calling for that title fight for the winner of Moreno, Pantoja, and Abu Dhabi. This dude, there ain't no way you're getting that when Brandon Royval knocked out Nicolau in his last fight like he did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. The, like, at like, yeah, best, you gotta... he's getting a title eliminator with Roy Valley. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. At best, that's what's going to happen. Because it's like, yeah, you got a real nope, close split decision best. with number three. He got the knockout over number four. Like, it just... <laughs> yeah. And if anything, and... it should probably just... Roy Val should just straight up get the winner of that next title fight. And then depending yeah. on, you know, just how how that fight plays out and, you know, just just how much damage, you know, the, uh, the loser takes and stuff, maybe Albazi could get the loser of that fight. And then, you know, yeah. to, like, work his way into a title after that. But there ain't no way you get a title shot off of that performance. It's just... I. If anything, like, I can understand, like, you, what you're saying, like, a title eliminator with Brandon Roy Val. But I know one, Roy Val's the uh, backup at the moment for the flyweight title yep. fight. So just in case anything happens there. If anything, I'd almost rather see, like... Amir versus Mateus Nikolaj, just because like it was like the first two rounds were close. Third went to Amir, four and five for Kai. Like I just I didn't see Amir winning, so just like I can't be like, yeah, he deserves to get up into a title eliminate. Like it's just weird, you know and, what I mean? And that's why I feel like you know that's why you just let Roy Val get it and just give you can give him like the loser of the like of uh Pantoja and Marino. Yeah. yeah. Right, because it's like realistically he's still five and no, he still did beat he Kai is. who was number three, regardless of exactly. how it happened. It's not like you can Judges necessarily him punish him for it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you so shouldn't make him now at this point fight down off of like someone who's coming off of a loss yeah i just agree it's yeah. either an eliminator nah. or and Mateus the should loser of... be a while out because that was mm-hmm. a fucking vicious no, knockout was. like yeah. he probably shouldn't be fighting until the end of the year earliest like that that was, no, yeah. that was a bad knockout but yeah so either way uh overall pretty decent fight in the main event like we said kai Kai coming on later on, it was you know, but yeah, it just sucks. But whole main event mm-hmm. though, motherfucking Ooh. Alex Caceres, Bruce yeah. Leroy, thirty four years old, still hanging around the top fifteen, getting shit done. In because yeah, was it the he was on like an eight fight win streak or like six fight win streak, loses to mm-hmm. Sadiq Yusuf. Now he has a uh, another two fight win streak going for him. He's just been doing the damn thing. Gets the win over Daniel Pineda yeah. in fight of the night. It, that was just mm-hmm. a really good fight. That was Hell a banger. Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah. The first round was just mad scrambly. They're all over the place, just <laughs> in the mad different positions, oh just God. everywhere. But after that round, oh, was Daniel tired? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> got because Alex hurt him bad in the first round. Like I, I forget exactly what he landed, but I just remember he got hurt bad. Somehow was able to survive in there. And then, yeah, just going through that fucking third round, though. Yo, watching that shit live, that it was just so funny because, you know, we'll, we'll get into it like, you know, with topology later on. But it this was the deciding factor of how this fight ended on who was going to end up winning that night. And it, <laughs> just me and Kate were just going crazy watching that uh, all shit. All three of us. Oh, it it was just, just so funny because I had Caceres by sub, he had Caceres by knockout, he also had it by sub, but like it was between yeah. us with getting like the winning spot. So 
obviously at this point Alex is you know he's winning uh Daniel Pineda is fucking exhausted like Alex is also tired too he, because you he know, is but, but like Daniel was. was like yeah incredibly exhausted that's why yeah. I'm just talking about him like swinging no, yeah. crazy hands on his hips stepping back deep breaths like bad Alex in the third round just swinging on him swinging on him head kicking him just hurting him swinging crazy and Daniel just eating that shit stepping back and breathing just so close to getting knocked out so many fucking times was just hurt on his feet okay, so it was Jimmy's a body shot because he oh, landed yeah, the, the left he yes. landed the one shot to the body and you just see him like bend over and then yeah that's when he started putting his hands on his hip and I'm just yelling at him just hitting <laughs> him in the fucking body just anything and Casera just slowly just moving forward just trying to find <laughs> just his standing way. in front of him but he's also <laughs> yeah. tired so he doesn't have that energy just stand there and swing and capitalize on how hurt he is he oh. could swing and breathe and swing and breathe and do these shots but he couldn't just do a full flurry of shit so Jimmy's going crazy like knock him out bro knock him out I'm gonna win this shit and what was it like the last like minute of the round yeah. um because the whole time I'm like just take him down or Daniel just go for the takedown down, just try yeah, to take him down you him to, like, yeah daniel take him down so just, but finally but Pineda finally alex went for the takedown in like the last minute and he gets him down he's on his back and he's cranking he's trying to take mm-hmm. his neck and i'm like yes sub him get the sub and he, daniel still <laughs> just survives this fucking tough <laughs> bastard and he just he lives he made it through but it was so funny tr- like watching this yeah, live it, it was a stressful fight for topology but yeah just, it was it was all of us it was a great fight different. to watch oh was, my god it was an amazing <laughs> fight but all of us just yelling jimmy yelling go to the body caceres go to the body and BK just like panada go for the takedown do yeah. something get this to the ground yeah because it's just funny because like oh, in the first man. and second round like they weren't swinging too much like alex uh 15 to daniel's five alex five to daniel's nine they had uh alex had three minutes of control time in the first round uh daniel with three and a half minutes of control time in the second round um and then the third round when they were just tired they're like all right we're just standing this up and we're swinging it out and alex just fucked him up (laughs) yeah oh man it was so good it was such a good fight yeah very much yeah very much deserving of deserving. fight of the night like that wasn't oh, as soon as that fight ended that wasn't even a question of like all right you know mm-hmm. like this is getting fight of the night right this like, is fight of the night like yeah. there ain't no way like jesus christ but yeah there were hills there were valleys there, you, you felt <laughs> it was just so like, good oh my god bruce leroy moving his ufc record to 16 11 and one no contest just <laughs> Yo, just, uh, it, it's just crazy. Just another one of those guys mm-hmm. that's just been at, like, you know, around a certain level, just a little bit outside yeah. of, like, the top 15, you know, for so long, just fighting everyone. Mm-hmm. And, but just being able to put, like, a good run together aside of the one loss to Sadiq Yusuf, which Sadiq's a fucking animal, you know what I mean? Like, that's, yeah. there's no shame in that. And, yeah, it's just so good to see. Gotta love him. Just always got that big ass smile on his face when fucking Bruce is announcing uh-huh. him. And they put the camera on him. <laughs> I love it. Makes me so happy. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, that just a great performance. Uh-huh. Solid veteran, but the featured bout, the veteran oh, of all God. veterans in the UFC. If you are a debuting UFC fighter. Don't you fucking dare take a fight against Jim Miller because (laughs) your ass is getting knocked the fuck out. Yo, that was so good. You can tell that Jim Miller was ready for a fight with Ludovic Klein for this one. Yes, you could (laughs) fucking tell. Because poor Jesse Butler just got butchered (laughs) in 23 seconds. That yeah. Shit. The way Jim just landed that left hand and just stiffened him like up and on the cage. And then another one like... on the way down, just oh yeah, just no. as he's down, just an uppercut, like Boom. almost like a hammer fist uppercut. Uh, like yeah, just it, hit some... honestly, it reminded me of Yoel Romero, Luke Rockhold, where like you yeah. know he like because uh, he lands the one shot and like you know he was just on the cage and he just yeah, like oh my, just that was nasty. Oh my god, nasty. It, no, it really was. Jesse oh. threw a 
was coming in through a wild right hand, and as he's like coming back around, he just gets clipped by that left hand. You could see it even in the slow motion how much yeah. his head just spun around. I was gonna say it, the, the slow motion, and it just so fast that like as soon as it lands, this shit just turns right back and unconscious. Yeah, and just oh my god, it was definitely god. a nasty knockout for Jesse, but uh. I love that for Jim Miller. <laughs> 23 <laughs> seconds in there, no damage. Let's fucking go. Yo, Two more okay, fights before <laughs> uh, UFC 300. And this uh-huh. man will hit 45 fights in the UFC and finally be able to retire with fighting at UFC 100, 200, and 300. Yep, because like, as of right now, overall in like company history, he has the most total fights at 42, the most wins at 25, and then in the lightweight division specifically... Most total fights at 39, most wins at 22, most finishes at 15, and then he also has uh, the most total fight time in 6 hours, 19 minutes, 22 seconds. And for him to have fucking over 6 hours of fight time, and I, like, what, maybe he was in, like, two five-round fights at most in his, like, UFC run? Like I I don't, yeah. Like, I don't think he was ever really main eventing, like, at any point in his career, but just a fucking legend man it's like it's you said, so a great legend to see of all legends yeah fed of all vets like uh i just just give him two more ufc debuting guys for him to easily get to <laughs> ufc 300 just fresh ready to go and then let him just fucking beat the living piss out of patty uh-huh. the batty at ufc 300 <laughs> i want that so bad so fucking bad that would just be so great for jim miller just, it really just would be the it, cherry on top. Opening up the fucking pay per view against the fucking the new Cash Cow and just wiping the fucking mat with his mop head. Like, oh uh, my god. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> that would be so fucking great. Just fucking left hook him and then grab his ankles <laughs> and just clean the fucking mats with him just all around and just toss him out of the cage. Just be like, I'm done, everyone. That was a great career. Thank you all. <laughs> and just walk out. <laughs> Yeah, Jim fucking yeah, no, I'd love that. lures Patty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. His fucking yeah. suspect ass chin. Like, <sighs> bro, because that, because I, I said it when we watched it, like, everyone thought that Patty was having a problem with fucking Jared Gordon's left hook. Mm hmm. Jim Miller is flatlining him. Like that, and that's the thing. It's not even just Jared, dude. Like he gets sat down in every one of his fights. Yeah, or like at least, yeah. or at not least, sat down, or, but hurt. You, you know, know what I mean? Like, yeah, like he gets hurt in every one of his fights. I know he comes back and wins, but like, let that be someone with the power to fucking flatline you. Like, yeah, yeah. And I it's think like, the what? Only Patty's going to grapple with Jim Miller. Do <laughs> it. Do oh. it. I <laughs> fucking shoot would. a takedown on him. He's jumping that kill with the fucking swiftness on him, and he's choking him out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like. Oh my god. I just love it. That shit... It just makes me so goddamn happy. Motherfucking Jim A10. Don't know where that comes from, Miller, but... (laughs) But let's go. That just... That was so good, but... Mm -hmm. And it it just sucks for fucking uh, Jesse Butler, too, because it's just like... Short notice debut. Yeah, like like a couple of days. (laughs) Right, because... Yeah. yeah, third person was it to media take that day fight. when fucking Jared Gordon pulled it, like got pulled from the card. Hmm? Wasn't it media day when Jared? Yeah, got... it was right after media day because Jared Gordon was saying he had gotten a concussion after his last fight, and he like cured himself. And Dana was like, "No, you're not a fucking like." Dana even said this at the post fight press card. He's like, "No, you're not a fucking doctor. You don't just get to. You didn't tell us this for six weeks." We find out on media day. No, fuck you. Oh, I didn't respect know. us. I didn't, yeah, respect I, didn't, I didn't know that's how that happened either. Damn. Yeah. I mean, shit. Who would have thought that Dane is going to be out here looking out for his fighters like that? <laughs> yeah. Well, he, if he has a concussion, he goes out and gets another one. Potentially, like, gets like a like a brain bleed or a hemorrhage. No, or no I know, there. and that's like, what I'm saying. But like, who would have thought Dana out here caring about yeah. his fighters like that? I'll just only say that uh, he didn't need Jared Gordon to save a card. Let's just say that. <laughs> that's true. No, hundred percent. Because when they need someone to save a card, yeah, Michael Bisping that just got the dog shit beat out of him <laughs> three weeks later. Let's send him to China to fight Kelvin Gastelum. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that was. 
uh, you know, and I, and it's just like, just knowing that it's like, mm, that that's honestly the only reason. Jared didn't mean shit to that card. That's why it's like, that's why Dana will play that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, but either way, though, uh, just this card, honestly, for it, it always happens where you just going in. It's not the greatest card, you know, on paper, but you just end up with so many goddamn good performances mm-hmm. because holy shit, that second fight on the main card, Kareen Silva over Ketlin Souza. Man, <laughs> <laughs> that was disgusting. Yeah, I caught the like. Uh, out of all of us watching, I think I'm the only one who caught it live. Yeah, I that think. knee popping out during that fucking knee bar because it yeah. happened so quick. It popped and she immediately tapped. And oh yeah, mm, nasty, just absolutely disgusting. Yeah, that first round knee bar, minute and forty five seconds in, two and zero oh in the UFC, two first round submissions, sixteen wins, sixteen finishes in her professional career. 29 years old, nickname killer. Yeah. Like, she's yeah. coming to fucking <laughs> kill this problem. division. Like, <laughs> uh-huh. oh. And it, it's just, I'm, I just love it so much. And just, I feel like every week you just see it, like, you just keep on seeing it over and over again. Where it's just another female fighter at 125 that's just young as shit coming in and you're just like damn just putting on a performance Uh give it a couple years they're gonna be fucking some people up in the top of that division and oh yeah yeah i can't wait for 125 in the women's division i wouldn't be surprised if by like start of 2025 if that's gonna be the best female division honestly like i i really don't think it's gonna take that long you just like just let some of those like older people, you know, like in the top fifteen, just start getting weeded out, and that that division is so good right now. It's so fucking fun. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it just beautiful performance for uh for Silva for Souza sucks making her UFC debut gets subbed like that. It's and just mm-hmm. there's no way she ain't get something tore in there. She yeah like that... you, you watched it pop, <sighs> but then yeah, just getting helps to walk off stage, just uh, limping away. Like, yeah, it was definitely not great for her. Like that sucks. Yeah, you, hopefully oh. she can recover from that, do what she has to do, and come back and be good. <laughs> yeah, probably see her like sometime like first second quarter of 2024. That's what I was gonna say. If like earliest late 23 but like mm, yeah, she, it, she should probably i mean that's like because if she like tore some shit or whatever it's yeah. like that would be some tony ferguson shit like be, having a fight six months later you yeah, know that's like true. that's yeah that's just a rough one but good shit for silva just can't wait to see will not be long until she's in the top 15 at absolutely all absolutely not she's gonna be just <laughs> ripping people's yeah. limbs to the top. <laughs> oh, just, just think about just some of like these fucking like the grab because like just pulling up the uh, rankings real quick. Like Miranda Maverick, Andrea Lee, Casey O'Neill, Macy Barber. Like those are a lot of people that are just gonna be trying to like have decent striking, but will clinch and try and shoot takedowns and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And she's gonna take their knee, yeah. elbow, neck, whatever she can home. Yeah, that's there's <laughs> like there's just a lot of people right now up until like Caitlin Chuch Caitlin Chukagian at like number six, where just stylistically it's like, yeah, she could probably rip a lot of their limbs off right now. Yeah, because what is she be doing? Knee bar, darse choke, guillotine choke, arm bar, heel hook, punches, <laughs> knee bar, triangle Everything. choke, elbows, arm bar, punches, <laughs> arm bar, punches, head kick. <laughs> like, she's a fucking monster. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. Just so good. Oh, but uh, the last, like, real great performance um, that was, like, you know, of note on the card earlier on in the prelims, fourth fight of the night. Jamie Malarkey is always some good fun, but goddamn, yeah. that was sad to see. Motherfucking Muhammad Naimov coming in and just starched him in the second round. What a way to make yeah. a UFC debut. Yeah. That was great. No, yeah, 100%. Because Jesus Christ. <laughs> that knockout <clean>. was. <sighs> 
Jamie just yeah he he was just backing him up on the cage. Mm-hmm. You seen him? He fakes the takedown. He just down, starts to raise the level. Up. Had his hands just so far out, not prepared. To, like he wasn't throwing a punch. He wasn't guarding. Like just nothing. And oh yeah, he just right lined just, that right hand up. Just beautifully vicious, vicious. and just <sighs> shit. Gets taken out in the second round, two minutes fifty nine in. Just god damn. Yeah, and I mean, cause, oh uh, yeah, he's fighting. Um, well, fighting out of uh, Denver, Colorado. Actually, that's kind of cool. Um, but from Tajikistan, I know they UFC's been signing like a couple of Tajikistani fighters. Like you know, they've been mm-hmm. coming in. Um, cause it wasn't too long ago. Like I remember seeing someone and like you know that like they. I'm pretty sure they won and they showed like just. It was everyone like a whole ass arena mm-hmm. or whatever in the middle of the night, just like you know, cheering for like the one person Damn. on the card, like on the prelims and yeah. shit. Like that's and, fucking crazy. Yeah, so it's just that's you, awesome. You yeah, you know, and just kind of like how we were talking about, like you just get like some of these countries, you know what I mean, where it's like it's so much smaller, but like because so much less people like know about it, the fandom is just so much like hardcore. And when they finally get a person to like the highest stage, you know, it's and well, like, yeah, it's also because of it being so much smaller. It's like you have that, you have a more of a sense of like that hometown support, like yeah, even the like community feeling. Yeah, like, you yeah. know, because it's like yeah, with America, it's so fucking big, and it's like yeah, people might like you know in the crowd like yeah get hyped for like oh. We're in Denver and people are fighting out of Denver. That's cool. But that's not necessarily the person they're betting on rooting for just because mm-hmm. of it. Like, there's no, like, personal ties to it. They don't feel like any form of, like, a connection. But, like, I feel like when you go to, like, other countries, they're, like, into it. They're like, yeah. no, this is my hometown. This is what I fight for. This is, like, this is my mm-hmm. family, my friends, my people. Like, this is what I do. And then, in return, the support is fucking great. Oh, like, well, yeah. And it definitely does depend on, like, the fighters and where oh, yeah, they're from sure. here. You know, because, no, yeah. like, you know... Um, um, just off like the top like definitely like dustin in louisiana you know what i mean like he but that's is somebody that i feel like, like you know what i mean he's somebody that like I feel he like... reps louisiana you know what i mean exactly. like yeah it's <laughs> but but no yeah for sure but it's just it's not as even much, like fucking you know? like aljo you know being from long island and shit it's like he does not get that kind of fucking support from long, okay but respectfully you know, like, we no. should know as people from new york that new york is full oh, of haters no I, you ain't I, never I gonna go nowhere in new york if you're trying to rely on the people you know and that's just facts no, like no, but it, you know <laughs> but like just like trying to think of like a bigger place you no, know yeah, and yeah. like new york you know so that's what just for that example it's yeah like, but it's but yeah that's the thing is i don't know it's just different yeah. different cultures and shit it, exactly but but either way, great fucking performance, great way to make your UFC debut, and just goddamn 155, man. You gotta love mm-hmm. it because that shit never stops having fun. <laughs> that that division is always just fucking swinging and banging, and we are here for it. Oh, I fucking yeah. love 155. <laughs> Bro, 155 has been having a lot of people debut recently as well. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it it's glorious. It's beautiful. <laughs> Violence. <laughs> we just we just keep making the division just deeper and deeper, guys. Go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> While the top of it stays fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, top five is not gonna have much movement, but from like six, six down? to fifty four, you know, like <laughs> let's go. That's where you really gotta be watching. <laughs> yeah. No, for real. seriously though, it's fucking true. <laughs> right, like honestly is the ufc could do like a fucking top like 25 easily in fucking lightweight you know what i mean and like and those and like the people down to 25 would be deserving to have numbers next to their name you know what i mean like (laughs) it's just yeah 155 they do have like a top 25 like as an internal thing for matchmaking yeah it's just like that's not a publicized thing yeah yeah i wish they would publicize that though you know that'd be cool like, not make it, like, official, but just, like, yeah, this is what we do. Mm. That would just be funny, though. Yeah. <laughs> People out here rocking, yeah, I'm number 19 in the UFC. Well, no, it, the, the funny thing mm. to that thought to me is because you would have the official UFC rankings done by the media members... And then you would have unofficial UFC rankings done, done by, by the, the UFC. UFC. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so then it's like, it's the unofficial ones, but obviously everyone's going to care more about that. And yeah. The, and <laughs> That's the funny part, is once that were, if that were to actually be publicized, 
No one would give a fuck about the ranks on the left <laughs> I just side. Patty's choose number not, 10. <laughs> listen, I just choose not to remember ever that the UFC rankings are ran by media. <laughs> um, so that wasn't in my head. <laughs> but yeah, you just and I just had that. That would just be so funny. Oh, man. But there were some other uh, other good fights on the card. Other like decent performances. Some honorable mm-hmm. mentions. But um, motherfucking Tim Elliott. Trailer Park Dom Cruz. One of my favorite mm-hmm. 25ers ever. Got back out there. It was out for like a little over a year, but having a lot of shit going on in his personal life that he be tween about and shit. But uh, I mean, so far in the last two yeah. weeks, divorce fighters two and zero in solid decisions. Let's go. Yeah, let's fucking go. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a new method to the madness over here. <laughs> you gotta get divorced, a real nasty one, and then you gotta fight, and you're gonna fucking you're gonna do some shit. <laughs> yeah, if you need your wife to cheat on you with her best friend or whatever, wasn't it Kevin Kroom too? Yeah. Like, a, like no, an ugly ass motherfucker and other too. UFC athlete. Stop! He's out here putting this shit on Twitter. Yeah, he said that. Yes! Um, he he said that like he was talking about it in the media day and like and I like because I definitely understand, but like I don't know, just listening to him talk about it and he was just saying that basically like. You know, there was just, like, a lot of, like, because that happened, and then he was just basically, like, in because um, he's from, like, Kansas City, and so it's, like, all of his, like, training partners or whatever, and, like, all of that situation was from there, so he was just, like, mm-hmm. you know, he'd go, like, do whatever, and then he'd, like, come back home, try and be, like, with his daughter, and, like, there's just, like, his whole hometown is just, like, oh, there's, like, all this shit going on, and he's just, like, he just said that, like, he felt like he just had, like, all this shit on him, and he's just, like, I just basically gotta, like, put it online to, like, basically vent about it you know because he was like i didn't have anyone to like talk to or like you know and then he no, was I just had... like yeah and then he That's sad. and then he like you know was just like moved to texas and stuff so it's like you know mm-hmm. just trying so it's like i don't know like yeah that fucking sucks yeah it's like i, I just felt bad for him i i understand that like just posting it you know no, it's no, no, like, no. Yeah. like okay because honestly the way that i'm thinking about it is like He's up 3 a.m. with a beer next to him. My fucking whore wife. Did anyone else have relationships with my whore wife? <laughs> no, yeah. No, I, yeah. Nah, that was, was that was him trying to be therapeutic with it, basically. Yeah. Like, <laughs> which yeah, is no, like, it's definitely not the best way to do it, but it's like, no, it's not. If it but, helps like, you, man, like, like, fuck it. You know, it's like, the only thing I mean, realistically, really at the end of the day, the reason why people say not to put your shit on, out online is just because then everyone's in your business. But if you don't care who knows your shit and you're not ashamed of what you have going on, it doesn't fucking matter. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I no. was just thinking of it in one small boxed context yeah, of yeah, like. Yeah. Is dude just on there like ah, ah, <laughs> yeah. into the void, you know? <laughs> but like, and because yeah, and, no. I know. He, and then he was saying because like yeah, he'd go like to Kansas City and like you know media around there or whatever. Like everyone would be like asking him about like his situation with his wife and shit. And like, and he was just and he was saying that like he wouldn't want to just say what was going on and just be like a dick about it, basically. So he's just like, oh, like you know, like just kind of like playing around it. And then so he's like, yeah, no, nah, I just gotta like get out no, of here I- and like. And I so it's to. like, you know, I understand it. It's just good for him for just moving through it and just, you know, mm-hmm. just trying to be better. That's it. No, yeah, he was. That's and all you can like... do. Yeah. But I mean, for his performance, it was good. Yeah. He's just an old man and he did exactly <sighs> what he should have done, which is. Yo, that not... third round jog. <laughs> that third round jog was so funny. Just the fucking backwards. <laughs> he would do something, goes go right back to it, right back to it, <laughs> bro. I he stopped. lost my shit when Tim is just yeah jogging backwards, and Victor's like, "What do I do? Switch stance, switch stance. Where are you?" <laughs> There's a spinning wheel kick and gets taken down for it. <laughs> right, I was gonna say, and then finally he decides what to do, and it's the most fucking dramatic move you can make, and gets taken down for it. Like my boy. <laughs> <laughs> my boy it's like the whole it's time it's like move. it's like i want him to win and i'm just saying i'm just like victor just kick him in the fucking leg like, what? <laughs> just kick him and he's like, like what do i do where'd you go <laughs> <laughs> oh man but yeah it was Spring good <laughs> happy to see tim back but yeah fun fight overall oh yeah <sighs> you know it's not a fun fight and you know who did not have a good performance and is not making better of themselves or their name <laughs> <laughs> Abubakar. He's ruining the Nurmagomedov name out here. Because she 17 it. 4 and 1? Yeah. That's not a Nurmagomedov record. Uh, that was just a real rough loss to fucking Eliza Zaleski. It was. No, it was. Like, 
and, and there's not really like when you actually like look at the fight, it's like round one it was so close, like just statistically and just watching it live, just like you couldn't really, in my opinion, I wasn't really swayed either way. <laughs> yeah. I was and just then, real surprised that he couldn't do shit with the grappling, like, at all no, throughout the that fight. that was the thing. And yeah. then, yeah, by the end of the second round, like, start of the third, he was just tired. He couldn't do, like, the takedowns were just so far away, so fucking telegraphed. Mm -hmm. uh, fucking Elizy was just sprawling the fuck on him. Like, it was... Yeah. Yeah. Dude went eight for... Oh, sorry, he went one for eight on takedown attempts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's crazy. For the fight, like... Yeah. Oh for six in the third round. Yeah, Just, not great at all. No. You know what else wasn't great? I'm really sad to see. Old man Arlovsky still out here yeah. and still getting knocked out. Yeah. It was a good performance yeah. for Dante Mays, but it just, it's just like, like yeah, it's just sad to see. It, it, it was sad to see. Like, he said, like, if it was any other heavyweight, like, I would praise him because it was set up perfectly. He, you know. Weaves to the outside, comes in with that huge overhand right, lands right on the chin. Like, yeah, it was a beautiful sequence that he did. It's just like, why did you have to do it to our old man Orlovsky? Exactly. It was, uh, he's like, You think I was gonna let old man do it to me? Nah, <laughs> you would have beat him to a slow decision. I know, decision. I was gonna say, Nah, he would have <laughs> grinded out that slow decision. I thought that he could have got it done, but same, nah, same, sad. But that's going to wrap up UFC Fight Night. Cara France versus Albazi. Good one overall. And that's going to bring us to Tapology. We said it was... Co-Main was the deciding factor. And because it went to decision with Caceres, Kate's winning streak extends to seven. She... Crazy. Yeah, I... Just, like, the past two weeks, I have not been confident at all. I'm just like, there's no way it's going to happen again. Like, there's just no way. And then it does. And I'm like, yo, bro. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like, especially these past two weeks. Because, like, I was just so not confident in it. Like, at all. At all. And then I wasn't even doing great at first either. And then I just got up there. Yeah. It, oh, man. Kate gets first place with 490 points overall. I get second with 440, and Ginger gets third with 300. Yo, what's your method to pick and fights, Ginger? Uh, this last week was I woke up at, like, an hour before the card and needed to pick fights. But, like, okay, no, <laughs> no, 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 like, while you're looking at topology, what is your method? Do you think too hard? Do you look at them and look at their last fights and see who they fought and all of this stuff, or do you just pick? I, I kind of just try and see, like, how they're winning or how they're losing. I don't, like, look at the names so much because half the time it's, like, especially on prelims, it's, like, debuting guys or guys who have only had one fight in the UFC. So it's, like, you can't really just be, like, yeah, no, he beat, you know, name value. But kind of just looking at, like, the ways they're winning and stuff like that. Just kind of, like, what's <laughs> going on with that and just... Well, I'm sure Jimmy was asking because we were discussing it earlier and it seems mm -hmm. like... I think he was saying for him, but, like, I know for me especially, the less mm -hmm. thought I put into it, the better. The more I sit there and start thinking about it, I have to tell myself to shut the fuck up. You're doing too much. Just pick. Go with what you think. <laughs> Go with what you feel. Go with what the well, name looks like. Go with the haircut. Like, literally, whatever my head tells me, that's what I go with. And I've been doing pretty good with this method. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I'm like going back to my original when I first started watching fights and didn't know anything roots and I would just be like that guy and I always like I picked fucking fantastic forever because I didn't know anything and I was just like I, I think this yeah it's uh, so close I needed Caceres to get that fucking KO and then I needed that perfect in the motherfucking main event but I didn't get that at all I needed Kai by second round KO that clearly did not happen. Uh, she, yeah. We got the same amount of picks overall, right? Uh, like the same. Mm -hmm. Both got three decisions. I had no perfects. You had the perfect, and then we both had semi perfect. That was the that was the difference maker. But no, because yeah. I had the one perfect. You didn't have a perfect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you had the extra fifty. Yep. Yeah, but. Mwahaha. Hmm. 
Tapology, always good fun. Fuck you, mm-hmm. Kate. You're losing next week. I promise. I promise that I will think so little next week. You're already <laughs> thinking too much. Because I never think I'm going to win, so you're already thinking too much by thinking I'm going to lose. <laughs> I always think you're going to lose and always think I'm going to win. I literally just every Saturday, usually midstream, go, oh shit, picks. And then I pull out my phone and I do them real quick. <laughs> she, she can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> like Ginger, every Hey Ginger, I'm week. doing my best to fucking try and get her. Where are you at, all right? Where's the work you're putting in? All right, because you're not helping out in this situation. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, Tapology Group is good. Slowly getting more people overall in here. Always having more fun with it. I like it. It's good. Well, let's go. That's going to move us on to the next shit. Before some some real life... It's not, it's not fight news and announcements, but... Did it happen earlier on this week? Tuesday... Mm-hmm. was the return of Tough, the season premiere of Tough 31, McGregor and Chandler. My favorite part about it was all the commercials. I really <laughs> loved how much ads I got to watch. Yeah. I really liked the lack of progression and how they didn't show much and how it was like five minutes of one guy, long commercial break, five minutes of the other guy, long commercial break, some other shit that didn't really entertain anyone. Commercial break. <laughs> Fight! <laughs> yeah, it... That was a really disappointing season debut. It, I was just hoping yeah. it was gonna be fun, like, you know, just be some wacky shit, but, yeah, it... That was... the Yeah, all of the fucking commercial breaks and ads, like, that was... That was just way too much, and then... It just wasn't even, like, that good. Like, yeah, there just wasn't any, like, fun things really going on in the show, and then... Like, dude got the good knockout, which was, like, great for him, but it just... Mm -hmm. Fucking nine seconds. I was gonna say, it (laughs) sucked for us, because after such an anticlimactic shit episode, it was that. (laughs) And it was like, yeah, so now we don't even get, like, a fight. Like, it was cool, you got the knockout, that's awesome, but, like... Damn, we got to watch a nine second knockout real quick. <laughs> and it was just weird because, like, yeah, he goes out there, like, the dude, uh, the other dude was pushing forward on mm-hmm. Roosevelt Roberts. Roosevelt, he throws a one two, the two lands, like, starts backing the dude up. Roosevelt pushed forward again, throws another one two, like, the two lands again, and the dude just went down. And it was just like, damn, like, it. Bro's head was sore from all the crying the day before, about two days away from <laughs> his family. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. He had a headache. How are you going to be crying, like, two days after just my family? I miss My them. tripod dog. He's <laughs> <laughs> fucking talking about his three-legged dog. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, yeah, it... Not, it, it... Not only all that, but, like, even at the beginning, like, when Connor and, like, Chandler were interacting, it was just so awkward. It really was. Like, The best part of the entire episode was the extra scenes at the end, and even then, it was still really awkward, but it was just so awkward, it was funny, because it's just Connor all coked up, making little comments, and Chandler being like, (laughs) yeah, and then Connor, like, making really awkward movements constantly because he couldn't stand still, and it was just really funny. Your shot's flying past me like wind. (laughs) 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 <laughs> oh my god it was just so yeah that it... was by far the funniest part was the after like after the fucking the, <laughs> the behind bonus the scene, scene yeah. yeah behind yeah. the scene bonus scene coked up connor <laughs> connor next to chandler who doesn't want to deal with him like just waiting mad long connor all angry at dana's got him waiting he's like you got me for the press conference but i ain't gonna let this happen again <laughs> mm. Oh man, missing but, uh, his fighters weigh in. Yeah, d- didn't even show up to the weigh ins. Like, just shows up the fucking night of the fight. It, yeah, it just. I mean, shit. When Connor was on there with Uriah Faber, he wasn't like they do two ses- uh, sessions a day, and he was only showing up to like yeah. the afternoon ones. Like he didn't go to the mo- any yeah. of the morning ones. He's like, my coaches do it. Like, just 
just goes in there. He's just like, this ain't Team McGregor. <laughs> he's just like, it's all, it's all about yourself. It's like, you don't give a fuck about anyone else in here. <laughs> They're all just like, what? It was really funny. Cause, like, I seen something earlier, and it was Dana talking about how um, he's not worried about having a not having a date set for Connor Chandler because... Um, like he's just saying that Connor's really excited to fight. Like you know, uh, he has a lot of money, so it's hard to get these guys like back into it. But you could just tell, like you know, he wants to do it or whatever. And like you know, just whatever with like the Ultimate Fighter. Like he's just enjoying it. And I'm like, dude, pulls up in a suit and can't do anything because the shit's too tight and he can barely move his arms. And he's not even coaching and he's all on drugs. And you talk about he's excited for this. All right, just I believe went in you. there to spar his fighters first day. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, show me like, what you got. <laughs> I, I don't think but... I've heard it. Like, I, it's the first episode, so I'm not going to be too critical of his coaching just yet. But I'm not sure if we're going to hear one actual technical breakdown of what. I'm sorry, his, but I'm gonna be his fighters should so be far. doing. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna be critical so far. You was in. No, I meant on his They was in the gym. You in the gym in a suit. No, how are you going to show them how to throw something, how to do something? You're just going to explain no, it? No, he was in the, in the gym. He had the Ultimate Fighter shirt on and stuff. He oh, was... yeah, okay, he did, he did. Yeah. I forgot about that. I was thinking of the one scene where he was in the suit, though, and I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah when he walks in, he's in the suit and shit. I'm just like, Connor. Just came in all fucking hunched over looking and shit when he entered. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> uh, he's a clown. Uh, all right, overall, one out of ten, what do you guys give in that episode? Because of the bonus scenes, a three. Oh, wow. See, you were talking about being critical. I was going to give it a two, even with the bonus scenes. Bonus scenes, the best I'll give it, I'll give it a five. I feel like that's the most generous you can be. But, yeah, it really wasn't great. Yeah, five is too generous. <laughs> no. That's like, oh, you're 50-50 yeah. on watching it. I would never suggest anyone to watch this episode. <laughs> the like, only reason, what? I mean, I don't know. If I rated something would, five out of ten, I wouldn't really like. I if someone gave me that, that, I wouldn't check it. Like, if someone was just like, "Oh, like, how was this movie?" and like one out of ten, and it was like five, I, I'd be like, "Oh, okay, I wouldn't watch it." I feel you. I wouldn't either. Just, but I'm critical. I feel like some people are like, "Yeah, it's fifty-fifty, okay." <laughs> I guess I look at five. It's like you, you know, you're not gonna recommend it to someone, but it's not like you're turning it off. Like you know, like while you're watching it, like this is too boring. Like I'm walking away. You know, That's like thing, five is average. <laughs> Like, it's not good. It's not bad. It's, it's just bad. kind of there. Hmm. I guess it is on the low end of readings. Either way, let's go tough. Hooray! <laughs> Hopefully, this next episode is better. Yeah, I, I looks hope like, so. I know I'm gonna keep watching, I, but <laughs> it looks I'm like they're waiting like for something to get better for sure. On that little preview thing, someone gets like hurt in sparring. Oh yeah. So. Also, can we talk about on the preview when fucking they push each other and you <laughs> just hear Dana get out of my way? <laughs> 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 um, that shit was so funny. They keep on I'm playing sure. that sound like bite Ryan and it's Bader hilarious. It really is. Oh man, but yeah, you need to cut that. We need that sound. <laughs> <laughs> get out of my Don't way. <laughs> Either way, though. Let's move on to some real fight news, fight announcements going on. Um, PFL got some more news. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Because, yeah, we didn't have, you know, the episode last week. There was no real fights going on. So we got, like, two weeks of fucking some news. It wasn't really much news anyway, and uh, just fight announcements. Yeah. But, yeah, number 10 was added to the list of suspensions for PFL. Let's go! Let's go. Fucking Rob Wilkinson. It's fucking goddamn 2022 <laughs> champ. He gets caught up to shit. Well, 205 mm-hmm. and uh, fucking heavyweight. And uh, it was mainly like the all there was like fucking seven. I feel like 205 guys that got caught. I feel like everyone was at 205. Like it was, for the most part. Yeah, just so many people. But yeah, it just ridiculous. Another one bites the dust. But, you know, they they're throwing people in and sliding people around and they're fixing their cards up so we'll see how uh, how PFL plays out but um and then other like kind of just news going on shit i mean Dana talking all this shit to Francis we don't do that kind of gimmicky shit around here worrying about that <coughs> um James Tony uh, and CM Punk but um 
Mm-hmm. Now apparently he's just offering big ass money to Tyson Fury to come fight John Jones. <laughs> yeah, that's uh. I mean, it's so fucking dumb. It's, it's just so funny life. how it was just right after, like it was literally within like a week that they he just started talking that shit and like saying that he, you know what I mean? It's like uh, yeah. Like, you're just gonna be that obvious with your bullshit. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, like, I don't know. Like, he at least used to just, whatever he would say might be going back on something I said, like, a month or two months, three You know what I mean? Like, but just within the week of no fights going on, nothing to change the fucking, like, MMA news cycle at all, <laughs> you're just gonna, Tyson, I got you. Big money over here in the UFC. <laughs> And then it's also just funny, just like, oh, we got Floyd paid, and it's like, you didn't pay Floyd. <laughs> like, <laughs> the UFC did not pay Floyd Mayweather for that boxing fight. That's... <laughs> you know who paid Floyd Floyd? <laughs> yeah, he paid you. <laughs> like, <laughs> if anything, like, get the right. fuck out of here. Like, it... Uh, it's just ridiculous. It's so fucking funny. But you know... That's just typical Dana shit. He'd just be talking out his ass. He'd just be saying shit that people are like, what are you talking about, bro? What are you doing? Yeah. It, that's Dana. That's Dana for sure. But on to some fight announcements. There's been some good ones. There's been some all right ones. But the weirdest one, probably just the date behind this, just saying November 4th, we're in fucking... Uh-huh. Just got into June, but like, all right, just book it five months out. Let's go. But um, Curtis Blades and Jaelton Almeida, <clears throat> not official, not signed, but they're looking to do that. Sao Paulo, Brazil. She, yep. I like that. Uh, that's yeah. good. I don't mind it. It's like, so good. That's a good jump up for Jaelton. Yep. Hell yeah. And yeah, just Curtis is kind of on that. <laughs> Right now, just trading wins and losses. He get, he gets a little bit up, then comes back down. A little bit up, then back down. <laughs> yep. It... Yeah, I think Gyalton can win, though, and it's not going to be great for Curtis to just... Well, I mean, a real funny stat is Curtis has only defended three of seven takedown shot on him in the UFC, so... And then oh. Gyalton's stat is every fight he's... Uh, five fights in the UFC? Yep, five All no. five fights, his opponents have gotten taken <laughs> down in the first 40 seconds of their fight. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Jeez. Curtis needs to do? Hmm. He needs to go down to Houston. <laughs> train with Derek Lewis. <laughs> teach me the uppercut, man. Teach me that uppercut you hit me with, man. <laughs> he don't got that black beast timing. He ain't Derek Lewis. Could you imagine? How do you just stand up, bro? <laughs> How do you just stand up? BJJ isn't real. Just stand up. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, that that should be a good one. I hope that, you know, they... I mean, it cause it, it just sucks because with a, just such an easy win for Gileton like that, you'd like to see him back sooner. But this mm-hmm. is just such a big step up that it's like you can't really be too mad at it. Curtis needs some time off after that nasty loss to Sergey. So that, that was the biggest thing is like exactly it, when you look at like the rankings and who he would have Jayalton who you would have been looking at to fight next for Jayalton. It's just like this is a huge jump up, but it makes the most sense because then it's like Tom Aspinall is fighting. Maybe give again Volkov. But that's just another tall kickboxer. Yeah. Maybe survey Spivak, but that's, you know, number eight versus yeah, he's number, number nine. nine. So, like... And then even so, it's like, yeah, Volkov is only number seven, you know, like... And he got, like, he's on a two, like, good uh, fight win streak, so, like, I feel like he needs, you know, like, he shouldn't be fighting mm-hmm. down like he has been doing that, so... Yeah. It, it, yeah, Volkov should be probably fighting... Actually, I wouldn't mind him versus Ty. Yeah. Yeah. I would love that. That'd be so much fun. But yeah, so Jalen find like really the only option was Curtis Blades because yeah, it definitely makes sense. I it think was either was Blades funny. or gone. <laughs> they weren't doing that. <laughs> but yeah, that's no, why cause... it just sucks for Curtis Blades. You know, coming off that yeah. uh, the loss to Sergey, and then like I said, I think Jalen's gonna win. He's number nine, so he's just gonna lose that top five position. And yep. 
for him to work yeah. his way back up, like, this is probably going to be the end of that run for him. Yeah, because, like, he was working his way up, and then, yeah, like you said, he lost to Francis, worked it up, lost to Lewis, got another win streak, lost to Sergey. so it's like... So now if he's he loses got to one Sergei real and run, lo- you know, and like, yeah. Exactly, yeah. and then loses to Gialton again, who's number nine, like, the road to working back up, it's just... Yeah, yeah that's a long road. It, it gets harder, but, I mean, you gotta remember, Curtis is only 32. Like, That's he's true. not, like, an old heavyweight. Like, he's not, yeah. like, an Arlovsky or a Hunt. Yeah, but he has, been, he has been KO'd four times, you know what I mean? Like, it's just... Yeah, but you've all... It, when you look at the people who KO'd him, Lewis and Ganu and Pavlovich. Yeah, but it's also the it's way just... that the UFC be doing him. Because every time yeah. he gets up, instead of giving him that title shot like other people might be granted, he's given the yeah. hardest hitter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. Well, what happens when the hardest hitter is the champ? But at least he would get that shot, though. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> just a I'm little saying, different. Right? But, like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's, like, other people, like I said, like, it just, it seems like some people have a easier path there. Like, they're just, like, the they way do. the fights are lined up, like, I'm not trying to diminish anything they do. But yeah, it's just, yeah. like, you know, like, it's just the way things line up, they get it a bit easier. And they don't have to face all of those yeah. problems. And then maybe they get the champ, and then they have to face it, and they lose it quicker. But, like, they made it there. But then there's people like Chris, who, like, things Curtis. just... Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> there's people like Curtis who just fucking, um, yeah, like the way things line up, it just, he kind of gets the shit under the stick, you know? He just gets those big punchers and then it ruins yeah. his streak and he has to go all over again. Because mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, yeah they they just, because it's the UFC doesn't look at Curtis as marketable or, you know what I mean? Like, he's not that mm-hmm. guy. So it's like when they get to that position, it's like, give them someone that can knock them out. So, like, to give them that spot, you know Not what I yet. mean? And exactly. so it's like, yeah. yeah, we're like you're saying, it's just other people, when they get close to that, they're going to be given a fight to shine to get into that spot, you know what I mean? And just... Oh, yeah. That's just that UFC matchmaking, and you just gotta... You gotta hope that you're good enough to just get through it and get your shot, you know what I mean? But... Nah, yeah, exactly. Either way, though, gonna be some good shit. Some more shit going on. August 5th. Saeed Nurmagomedov back after a rough loss to Jonathan Martinez versus Kyla Phillips, who's coming back after a USADA suspension. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You got popped for the same shit that Sean O'Malley did. Let's go, teammates forever. <laughs> yeah, what was that? Um, Austrian? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. That's a, that's gonna be a uh, fun fight either way. Kyler Phillips is really good. He's a fun fighter, oh, and yeah. Saeed solid. But I mean, yeah, that that was just. I I don't know if it was because I have always been like high on Jonathan Martinez and thought that he was really good and a fun fighter, but mm-hmm. I, I just really didn't expect him to be able to just like just stuff in Saeed's takedowns, just kicking up his legs, just really beating yeah. him up, and so I'm just mm-hmm. like. Is it like that, like great of like how Jonathan Martinez is, or, or was is Saeed, Saeed not of... as good as you thought? Yeah, and like, so it, yeah. this is a good. Is a good test to find that out. Who was yeah. underestimated? Who was overestimated? <laughs> exactly, exactly. But yeah, that's gonna be a fun fight. July fifteenth, though. Oh, T Rex is back. Gotta Let's love him. Go. Always some good fun. Let's go. Because yeah, his last fight, uh, he hasn't fought since the loss to um, Bonfim, right? He got knocked out bad in uh, January. Yeah, I was gonna. So, say, I think that's the last one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, that was a bad knockout. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But um, he's gonna be fighting uh Nazim Sadikov. Uh, that's that's gonna be a good fight, honestly. That's gonna be. I mean, on any any time, fucking uh, goddamn T Rex is in a fight. It's gonna be a fun fight. You know what I mean? That's. Oh, Hell yeah. yeah, and then Nazim um, was on the Contender Series last year. Yeah, came in, got the TKO over Evan Elder. Yep. Now he's lined up with T-Rex, so it's who finishes who. <laughs> yeah, another guy that just began a lot of finishes out here. He's got one decision in uh, CFFC. But, um, yeah, early in his career still, 8-1. and one. Gonna be a tough test. T-Rex, always a tough test, but, I mean, shit, he's out, he's out there for fucking swinging and banging so if he's able to land on you know on terrence he can terrence has been finished a few times so you know yeah. it's definitely definitely hope, can get that i don't done. want to see him get finished again i really hope that he can get it done over in his yeah for sure i it's uh 
he's just so awesome. He's such a cool kid. I just mm-hmm. don't want to. Yeah, like you said, I just don't want to see him get finished like that. Um, but bomb theme bros are back let's go <sighs> i'm so fucking excited <laughs> not on the same card this time though i'm a little sad about that but... yeah either way they're only fighting a few weeks apart you got first or well the first one happening july 1st ismael bomb theme versus ben, uh, benoit saint denise that's gonna be a good fight i no yeah <sighs> like, saint denise is good i'm sorry but he is saint denise just tough as fuck is the thing. Yeah, he's real, he's real tough. Didn't he fucking like, make his debut against Eliza Zaleski at 170? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it was a fight where everyone was like, "Why? Why are you not stopping this fight?" Yeah. 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 It was brutal. It was horrible. <laughs> but yeah, so, Bonfim probably gonna. Well, yeah, that, just... that was the one in Abu Dhabi, right? Mm, oh, um. Uh, You're Benoit? talking about a yeah. I'm pretty sure that was Abu Dhabi 2021. Oh, and that was the ref that got pulled out that fight. Yeah. 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 You're. I, I'm pretty sure yeah. you're right on that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, October 30th, 2021. That's funny. Because what yeah. was it? Yesterday we were talking about it, and I was yeah. trying to remember who it was, and then I know we obviously just saw his name, but uh-huh. I just I don't know. Um. Just now thinking of it, I was like, "Wait a second, that was the fucking fight." <laughs> that's yeah, that's real funny, but yeah, that was brutal. So he's yeah. definitely he's definitely tough as hell, <laughs> but his male Bonfim is good. The Bonfim bros are just they're fucking animals, yeah. man. Like, they are monsters. They are here to destroy those divisions. I we're both just so high on them. No, like... seriously, and with a better ref, it won't even go that way because you know if he gets beat the fuck up, hopefully <laughs> he won't have to survive to the decision just getting beat the fuck up. It just yeah. I mean, to be fair, like he also then goes on to win his next two, but via rear naked choke in the second and a right hook into ground strikes in the second round as well. So yeah, but yeah, <laughs> it's. I'm definitely gonna be uh definitely gonna be with uh Bonfim all the way. And then Gabriel Bonfim later on that month gonna be in the Salt Lake City card, July 29th versus Trevin Giles. Yo Tre- <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. The, that one you don't need the judges on that one. You're not gonna need too long give Bonfim the sub. That's <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's how I feel about You think he's gonna sub him? him? Yeah, that's not taking long. You don't think he's gonna come out flying near him, punch him to oblivion? <clears throat> nah, bom- uh, Ismail Bonfi might do that to Santinis, but I'm pretty sure Gabriel will just be getting more subs out here. But uh, but yeah. Oh shit, he's the only f- the fucking flying knee T Rex, isn't that how we knocked him out? <clears throat> no, uh, that was Ismail. He's wild 155. <sighs> I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing about them is I still can't get which one is in which weight class. Yeah, it's I understand it. I don't know. Just knowing like the matchmaking. And well, see, stuff and I them, don't know Trevin just, Giles like, enough. Yeah, or, and cause yeah. I know that he's yeah. fought at 185 and 170. So, oh, yeah, you know, know and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, he has a loss to do Plessy. <laughs> yo. Oh, wait, shit, I didn't. I don't Was that in the UFC? Yes. Hmm. Too many names, too many people to remember all of their weight class. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. And then with them, I just yeah. It was right after beating Roman Delice, then went on to lose to Dracus Duplessis round two, right cross. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, all right. I don't remember. Which that. is that pisses me off. <laughs> Are you gonna beat Roman and lose to Duplessis? Yo, Dracus is better than you think. All right, you just gotta give it to him. He's just got hands of fucking steel. Ginger's just a hater. He'll He's see, just though. a hater. But let's go next fight. Main event. I think it's a new date. They've been talking about this for a while. I think they've just been moving it around. I've seen it on fucking Big yeah. Marcel like 14 times, I feel like, at this point. <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> but just pops up every week. August 12th, Vicente Luque versus RDA at 170. Let's go. That's... I feel like RDA is going to win, but that's what makes me scared because Vicente is in the top 10 and RDA is probably going to win. And so top ten fights for him, so Yep. Yeah. But uh <clears throat> moving along, we still got a few more fights. J- 
July 29th, another one on that card. Uh, JoJo Wood, formerly Joanne Calderwood, fighting Priscilla Cachueta. I hope JoJo don't get fucked up. <clears throat> I, that's what I was about to say. She probably going to get fucked up. Yeah, probably going to get fucked up. Uh, but hey, it's a fight, you know? Anything can happen. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so let's go, JoJo. But um, another one on July 1st. <laughs> Romanov back after his just horrendous loss to Volkov. He yeah. lost the battle of the Alexanders. He was no Alexander. Not the great, at least. Yeah, he came in looking mm-hmm. real bad last fight. Yeah, he came in looking, looking rough. He comes in around 260 again. He's losing. If he comes back around 230 or something, he's probably going to win. So, But yeah, he's fighting Blagoy Ivanov, the truest number 15 contender in UFC heavyweight history. Can't get him out of there. Nope. Just, just unmovable. It's a battle for the the number fifteen spot. <laughs> Which and is I don't Black think Boy's either of them want it. <laughs> yep. Exactly why Blago is going to win. No, that's why I'm saying the loser gets the number fifteen spot. Neither of them want the fifteen oh. spot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, next fight up August nineteenth. That's going to be in Boston. I'm pretty pretty sure that's the uh, Boston date, right? Mm-hmm. Please so. Uh, GM three is back though after his rough loss, his double rough loss to Joe Pfeiffer. Um, one in the UFC and one on Fury Grappling, but um, he's going against Andre Petrosky and uh, yeah, Andre Petrosky's probably gonna win it. <laughs> yeah, poor Gerald. I always he just always looks like a scared little bat or something when he's in the octagon. I don't know. He just. You just don't look like he's like, he how belongs. did I get here? This isn't my sport. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh man. Mom, dad. I love him though. <laughs> Most I'm submissions scared. in middleweight history. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Um, last fight announcement though. You got Yana Santos back versus Macy Chiasson. Booked for 135, but I got a sneaky suspicion it's gonna be a 140 pound catch weight on it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Macy should just fight at 145. She should just go to the PFL and just fuck some people up. Bro, I don't understand it because especially as of recently, they've been booking more 145 bouts. Why is she fighting at 135? I don't know. Maybe she just sees that as like just being able to fight like, contenders and get to a title and doesn't look at it as a real division or a chance to fight for the title. I don't know. Just... I guess like, you know, that Fighters would make sense. Weird. But <laughs> bro, respectfully... Ain't no way you're about to be a title contender when you're missing weight three fights in a row. Potentially four. Yeah, it's... Or having catch weights, or you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's just, it's... it's not... It ain't happening. Like... <laughs> Either way, though, I should honestly... Honest, I just hope that Macy can pull a fun fight out of Yana. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm hoping for. And I think she can do it. Hopefully. <laughs> but, um... But yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> that's big emphasis that is on n- the hopefully. <laughs> that is not a small task you're ordering there, bud. <sighs> Let's go, Macy. Uh, but yeah, that's going to wrap up all of the fight news, fight announcements. Looking ahead to looking ahead. We got. We got a good amount of fights this week going on, honestly. We got yeah. PFL on Thursday. Yep. We got one on Friday. UFC on Saturday. All of them are really good events for them, honestly. Hell yeah. We'll start with the one card on Friday since Ginger don't give a fuck about one. And just is a hater, but you know, it just it is what it is. We got to live with it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> nah, nah. One fight night. Amazon Prime, 11. We got... I, I ain't never said his first name because I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. Is it? I ain't gonna say it. Let's go Ursel. <laughs> but <laughs> I just have to say it's so funny because, like, I understand, like, you know, if it's just like Regan, Regian, or something like that. But it's such a simple name compared to the other things that you can just be like, oh yeah, his name is 
for fucking when you say Carolina, whatever her last name Kowalkovich? is. Kowalkovich? Yeah, Kowalkovich? sure. Kowalkovich? You know what I'm saying? Like, you can look at that and be like, oh, yeah, I know what this name is, but Regian? Re- like, Regan? Mm-hmm. Regan? But it, it, just not- exactly. <laughs> no, it sounds right. I never heard no one say it. <laughs> yeah, just exactly. any of the pronunci- pronunciations. I'm sure someone's going to be like, yeah, sure. Close enough. Yeah. The, but it, it's, it's, the hedge, it's the hesitation on that name specifically that's hilarious. It throws but anyway, me for a loop. Whatever, it really just, just does. I'm not sure why. I just had to point it out because it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah, Ursul. <laughs> Ursul is fighting Dmitry Menshikov. But <clears throat> um, right, Dmitry Menshikov. No issue. <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it throws me for a loop, Kay. I don't know. But uh, Ursul, he's the one... <laughs> one lightweight Muay Thai and kickboxing champion. Um, I haven't seen him fight live yet, but I've been watching some of his re- uh, previous fights. I watched like his uh, first one fight. He just went out there. I'm pretty sure it was against um Anthony and Jaquani. That's the one that I fought or watched. Yeah, yeah. He was just running at this dude, swinging crazy, just just going after him. Like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? But then I watched the last fight that he had. He was a patient, calculated killer, just moving forward, stalking his opponent, just looking nasty. Just, yeah. It, mm, a lot uh, of growth and improvement from yeah. then to now. <laughs> Vicious body shots, just nice leg kicks, just good combo. Yeah, he he's just a fun fighter. I don't know shit about Dimitri, but, uh, I mean, you know, I'm just getting into one, so I just really be caring about the champions for the most part. I don't, I don't really know the challengers, but and it's Muay Thai. Muay Thai is always good in one. Exactly, it is always gonna be some good fun. Co-main event though, we got K. Rudatolo back, the one lightweight submission grappling world champion. Much appreciation for him. He's great. Yeah. I love the one submission grappling. It's so good. Yeah. Their champions are great. Kate is good. <laughs> Rutilo so, bro is awesome. Hell yeah. So Definitely excited go. for him to be on that card. <clears throat> but yeah. And then other than that, we got Superbond and kickboxing on that card. We got Nikki Holtzkin and kickboxing on that card. Um, Amber Kitchens back in Muay Thai. Some good names. Gonna be a good card. It's one, so I I know it's always gonna be some good fun. Yeah, that's the thing mm-hmm. with one. I don't really care if I know them or not. I'm gonna learn them eventually. It's always fun <clears throat> fights. <laughs> exactly. And it's like, honestly, the more that they got Muay Thai and kickboxing on it, because it was funny, like, just first getting into it and, like, just having so much. I'm just like, I want to see more MMA. And then I'm just like, mm, Get Muay this Thai MMA though? out of here. Show me all the Muay Thai. Show me a few kickboxing. It's like, yeah, you can do, like, two opening prelim MMA fights and then maybe, like, a top contender MMA fight on the main card. The rest just give me Muay Thai kickboxing, submission grappling. We're good to go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's going to wrap up the one card on Friday. Thursday, though, PFL is back. We got a couple cards in a row, but PFL for Atlanta, Georgia, Brendan Lochnane, 2022 champ. He's back against uh, Jesus Pinedo, but Brendan's probably going to win. Hell yeah. Yeah. This motherfucker just leg kicked the shit out of Marlon Moraes a couple months back. Mm-hmm. I mean, this dude is uh, 26-1. and one. He's definitely got a lot of fights, you know, but... I mean, I'm. I just gotta ride with Lockney. He. No, yeah, exactly. And it's just like, I. Just one of those things where it's tough to even like do anything like with it because like his last fight was you know split decision loss. It's a. Bless you. Bless. But yeah, no. So and Lockney just. 2022 champ. This came off that win against uh, Marlon Marais. Yeah. It's hard to bet against him. Daniel do be finishing people. Brandon ain't, Brendan ain't never been finished. So we'll see if he's tough enough or if Brendan can get it done. But I think he can. I definitely got him for that. Yeah, for sure. It yeah. should be a great fight. Let's go. Full main mm. event. Still in 145 division. So, I mean, I, I do favor Brendan to be like the winner of this season. But if he's not going to be the winner, it's this motherfucker because Movli Habulayev is back and, yeah, he is just a beast. He's just such great grappling. He's got great cardio. Just getting a lot of uh, decisions out here, but just grinding people out. Mm-hmm. Has a win previously over Brendan Lochnane in 2021. Got a split decision win. Um, But, yeah, he got that fucking... the. I feel like the biggest thing was um that 
probably see on like his highlights only real big highlight was uh that flying knee that he got in his pfl mm-hmm. debut in 2019 it was over uh damon jackson 10 seconds into the first round he just mm-hmm. backed him up and just unconscious but yeah 20 0 and 1 that dude is a beast he's fighting tyler diamond he was on uh the, the tough season with uh bryce mitchell <laughs> and uh brad katona who's on this tough season pretty That's sure cool. that was a tough 28 so tyler probably okay. gonna get fucked up in that fight. yep probably um, but yeah, we got Martin Hamlet on that card, two oh five, solid PFL fighter. Um, yeah, five and three in PFL overall. He got a good win in yeah. his uh in the last one over Muhammad Fakhradin. Um, mm-hmm. Muhammad ended up popping after that, but <laughs> 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 but yeah, got a face crank a minute and five seconds into the first round. So against Look, eight and ca- seven, Sam Kai. <laughs> Look, it doesn't count if. You lose, and then you pop for steroids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, Sam's getting fucked up in that one for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. There ain't no way he'll have a perfect record of eight and eight, all evened out, record weight <laughs> clean. Oh my god! And I mean, he then it... goes on to get eight draws in a row. <laughs> <laughs> now that would be fucking spectacular. Yeah, that'd be beautiful. <laughs> Was <laughs> eight, 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 <laughs> one no contest. <laughs> But um, and I mean, with you, know, all the people at two oh five popping, and like Tiago, fucking Muhammad Wilkinson, like just that picture and like that shot to win in that fucking championship is so much more clear. Because mm-hmm. if Martin Hamlet don't get it, Josh Oliveira is also on this card, and I feel like he's another good fighter to really like possibly get a chance yeah. at that. Yeah, how hyped you think they were that all those people got cut <laughs> or not cut but like suspended so like so happy. cut from the tournament this year so happy <laughs> just They're such an like... easy path to victory <laughs> like tiago came in they're like fuck that and then after how rob would just came in last year just like nah i'm knocking everyone the fuck out for this shit you know what i mean mm-hmm. like they were all like nah ain't doing it don't want it to happen <laughs> yeah because wilkinson failed flurry failed um Tiago and Muhammad failed. Jocko and Chris, failed. Yeah, Christoph <laughs> Jocko failed. Like that, and that's just within the two hundred five. Yeah, that's <laughs> crazy. You gotta love it, but um, but yeah. So that's uh, Josh Silvera, son of Conan Silvera, against Alon Monte. Probably gonna get a good win. Bubba Jenkins on the card. Somehow Marlon Marais is still getting PFL fights, and he's back on the card. But let's go. Yeah, Chris Wade, Roji, Kai, uh, Kudo, that should be a fun one. Impa Kasanga and I is yeah. on here, so yeah. We got we got some fun fights for sure. But PFL won. They got good cards this week coming right. up. <laughs> but it ain't no UFC 289, right? Nothing compares this month to that main event, huh? Eh? At least we got the right person in. Yeah. That's very true. <laughs> nah, yeah, nah. I'm excited about this. I'm nah, not mad. It, it, it there's, just, there's some good fights on here. They, should, just, they shouldn't have just bullshitted us the whole time. They've ruined it. They, they should have just hyped it up from the beginning. Yeah. They really should have. I just think that for a pay-per-view... Um... What do you mean? You got Mike Malott, Adam Fuggett, Nate Landweir, Eric Anders? An 11-fight pay-per-view card. With, yeah, <laughs> fucking... And all the names you said, of, Eric oh, Anders, uh, Mark Andre Varial, like fucking, and then on the prelims, Nasser Dinimov, of Chris Curtis. Yeah, the- <laughs> yeah, a top fifteen middleweight bout prelims. Like I'm sure the fights will be good. Random just- Maverick, top fifteen in her division. Like, <laughs> but yeah, it for sure. It's David just one Dvorak of those things that 15. if it wasn't Bro. for the co-main in the main event, this wouldn't be a pay per view. <laughs> yeah. Uh- Huh. <laughs> it's just funny because if this, I know Topology doesn't always have the bout order right, but if this is the bout order, it will go the last fight in the prelims will be Nasser Dean and Chris Curtis, a 185 top 15 bout into Eric Anders and Mark, <laughs> who are not ranked in the same division. To be fair, Eric it's versus Andre. Yeah. Probably more guaranteed action, and that's why. Yeah, I would have to assume if that is the order. I just find that funny. No, I know. It's just crazy. 
It's just, I, that's definitely why UFC would do it, but it's just real fight. Oh, yeah, yeah. That all, like you said, that's all the, the way up until that co-main and main event. It's just like because honestly, the co-main, you just take the main event off there, put make the co-main fucking five rounds, and that's a fucking a fight night. That's, yeah. that's a fight night. No, yeah, yeah. Like it's, I mean, honestly, shit. They fucking had like, uh, I'm pretty sure Amanda Nunes and fucking like Valentina headline fight night cards as championship bouts. So it's mm-hmm. like. This really is a fucking fight night ass pay per view, but main uh-huh. event: Amanda Nunes versus Irene Aldana. Like we I said before, say. the fight that it should have been—they shouldn't have bullshitted us with that fucking Joanna Pena trilogy. Get oh the fuck God. out of here! But yeah, let's go, Irene. I I really hope she can get that win. That'd be so awesome for her. I was about to—I just as I scroll down to see what fights have been canceled. The Chris Dawkins Khalil Roundtree fight. I'm. Sad that that fight's no longer on the card. Yep, that would have been uh, a good one. Hakeem Dawadu versus Lucas Almeida. I was, I'm actually sad about that because I was wondering where Hakeem Dawadu had been because I was like, look at him. I'm like, wait a minute. he's. I remember him. Where has he been? Because his last fight was it. Uh, not, not October. September of 2022. So I was like, Got to. it's been a minute. And then... It gets canceled. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> yep. Wonder Boy so and just... Michelle Pajada got canceled. Yeah, it got rescheduled, yeah. Yeah. But you know, but like canceled off this card and then yeah. Yeah. Dvorak versus Matt Schnell would have been a much better fight than him versus yeah. some debuting guy, like, you know, mm-hmm. or, yeah. It's just yeah. But Man and Nunes Arena, who you guys got in that one? Who do you think's gonna come out on top? You think the tides are shifting and it's time for the Mexican MMA fighters to be coming in? Honestly, I hope I want Irene to win. I did not realize Irene was thirty-five years old. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it would be cool if Irene won. One, just you know, change it up a little bit. Yeah, just another Mexican champion like that'd be really cool. But I honestly think Amanda's gonna get it done. Yeah, I, I think, think Amanda I, will. I think Amanda's just... winning. It's just. <laughs> mm-hmm. I would just prefer no for Irene sure. to win. And just for the change up, it's not any hate towards Amanda. I love her. No. It's just a, you know, just yeah, change things up. If she lost, I'm sure she would just retire and go live her life anyway, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but what if Irene just gets like another historic knockout and like spectac in some like wacky fashion? That'd just, be like, crazy. Up kicks her to mm-hmm. the knee and breaks her knee. Just like oh, my. just falls down and like, ah. <laughs> But not yet. That that last one over Macy, that was that's just such a wacky one. That's so fun. That was I'll kick yeah. to the liver, just <laughs> boom. Just how does that even her. work? But uh, yeah. How did it, you get that to It was perfect. Damn. She didn't even know what happened. She didn't know what she did. <laughs> yeah, that was total luck right there. She just threw oh, her 100%. Kick, hit her perfectly in the liver. <laughs> Beautiful though. Beautiful. I remember the post fight press, not the not even the post fight press conference, just post fight interview. Yeah, she was trying to say, yeah, we trained that kick. We tra-. it's like you train, you maybe train that kick. You don't train that kick for an up kick to the liver. I like don't try and bullshit us. I mean, on that. even <laughs> if she did, I would have believed her if she didn't look so confused when it happened. Yeah, for, that's that. That's just all it is. You know what I mean? Macy yeah. went down and she's looking like, oh shit, what happened? You know what I mean? Like looking kind of uh-huh. scared. Like, yep. is this going to be a no contest? Did I hit her something illegal? You know what I mean? Like she didn't know what happened. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Either way, hopefully, hopefully it's just a fun fight. Like you know, at the end of it, that's that's all we can really hope for. Either way, I'm sure it will be. That co-main event though. There is absolutely a hundred percent chance of excitement in that fight. Motherfucking Charlie Olives, the old broomstick is back against Benil Dariush. Benil stupid power Dariush. This is going to be so good. It is. I'm so excited for this. I just hope. I just really hope that Benny wins just because if he loses, he's never getting a title shot, and I just feel so bad for him, you know? Like, that's... Yeah. And I just hope that he wins in spectacular fashion to not get passed up by, like, fucking Connor (laughs) beating Chandler, Dustin beating Gaethje, you know what I mean? Something like that, like, just whatever, like, for a title shot, so it's like, yeah. Yeah, no. You you gotta give the man his shot if if he wins this fight, (sighs) it's just... I just hate it because it's like I really want Benny to get a shot, but I can't say I want Charles to lose. Yeah, I know. And I can't yeah, say I think Charles is going to lose. 
Like, I know there's the possibility. It's not like I'm like, oh, he 100% got it, but, like... I think I would favor Benny slightly. I favor Charles. And, because I know what you're just talking about. It's, this is, like, the one fight, thinking about it, that I can ever remember thinking about, where it's just... I can see either fighter winning by knockout. I can see either fighter winning by a submission. I can see either one winning a decision. Like, like it can literally yeah. just go in any way for either fighter. Exactly. Like, exactly. It, no, because I know a lot of times it's like, okay, this person's getting the decision or that person's getting the knockout or this person's getting the sub and this person's getting the knockout. That yep. person, like, yeah, this person's going to grind out the good decision unless this person can finish him. Like, Yeah, it's... Yeah, no, and the, they're both great submission guys they both have knockout power they both have good stand-up just both in different willing to go to ways work. like yeah Bro, i that. would the only thing that i would say is maybe charles chin is a little bit more suspect than benil's chin and that's yeah. like a barely type of thing like yeah i would it, and if anything, I would just say it's because Oliveira puts himself into the fire more to be hit with those yeah. shots. Like that's he's just more kill or be killed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. But well, even then, like Benio but I mean, Benny has been finished, finished by a few times. Dracar close. <sighs> I mean, what? Like he got fun. I know he got flying knee by Barboza, but like uh, he got he was going in by for a takedown, uh, Alex right, Hernandez yeah. flying knees by Barboza, yes. okay. and um yeah. earlier on lost to a uh, Ramsey Nijem. Okay. In 2014. Ramsey! Yeah. Stripper Ramsey! Oh, Katie. shit. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, first round got finished by him. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's so funny, it's Ramsey like, Ninja Mom. Because <laughs> that's the thing with this fight, is also, like, oh, it could happen where Benil hurts Charles, goes in, tries to sub him, and then gets subbed himself, or he just hurts him and subs him himself. Like, there are too yeah. many ways where it's, like, it is dangerous anywhere you go with either of these guys, who knows what could happen yes sir it oh it's gonna be good i it and it just it just sucks when like the ufc especially with them as of late being more like mm -hmm. open to like big fight means a lot co-main event five rounds even though it's not a title fight this should be five rounds man yeah like this especially if it's like a title it's eliminator yeah and you know what i mean it's like bro this was supposed to be a main event for a fight night remember uh, yeah but it's like bro if this like, they should if like, they're in the third round and they're just going to war with each other, or they're having scrambles, and it just and the fucking round ends. We're all gonna be sitting there just so upset that we don't got two more. No, like, seriously, it's, it's just yeah. that shit is crazy. Because to your point, it was the main event, which would have been five rounds, and then yeah, it's the fucking title eliminator. Winner's supposed to be next up for the title shot, so why wouldn't you have them in a five round fight beforehand too? Especially for Benny, like Charles has been in a few in the, his last few fights. Yeah. I, Give Benny that five rounder. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, it's it just sucks. I yeah, it just it would have made, and it's like I don't know because especially on a card like this too, I feel yeah. like if you make the co-main five rounds, because like I know just chill son and always just be talking shit because like oh you're just changing the rules of the sport like it's only supposed to be five rounds if it's like you know main event or a championship fight, but it's like I feel like it just makes it feel bigger because it's like yeah five rounds like those are for bigger fights so it makes it feel like there's more on the line because mm -hmm. it feels it has that main event feel you know like right and just yeah just add the little bit to this lackluster card <laughs> yeah because yeah featured bout mike malott he's canadian i get it but in the featured bout come on against adam fuggett all right that's why i'm saying like you gotta switch that out with the uh imov and uh curtis fight and it makes sense yeah, or fucking get him out of here and put uh, fucking Jasmine Yes Vicious against Miranda Maverick up in there because at least Miranda's in the top fifteen and like you know like and Yes is yeah. Canadian yeah so, exactly so you so, got your like, Canadian so, fighter and you got the rankings exactly like it but yeah then Dan Ige versus Nate the Train honestly that's gonna be a fun fight yeah. like I it's it's yeah. a good fight for pay per view but it's like. That's the kind of thing where That's you throw in the opener because it's like opener, yeah. exactly like because you just needed that one more fight. You needed that good banger. It's like yeah, here you go. Let's get you guys on the pay per view. Exactly. You know, Danny Gay is gonna fight Nate the Train in the dumbest way mm -hmm. possible, so it's gonna end yep. up being a war. Like it's, like it's either that's either a you know prelim feature about like the last fight on the prelims, or yeah. it's the opener for a uh, pay per view. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's but here it is, second fight on the main card. Um, and then, yeah, as we said before, Eric Anders, Mark andre Barrio. Uh, 
got Nasser is... Chris Curtis. Like, you know, it's a good fight. Miranda Maverick, Jasmine, as you said, it's a good fight. Um, Arichi Lang against Eamon Zahabi. That should probably be fun. David yeah. Dvorak. But that's... This is a fight night, man. And they're going to make everyone oh, Blake pay back. 80 bucks for that shit. 80 yeah. bucks for this. Crazy. Get yeah. the fuck up on out of here. That's enough looking ahead for me. <laughs> oh, man. But no, nah, it, it, it'll probably end up being fun overall. You know what I mean? Just matchmaking. No, that's yeah. how that shit goes. Like we always say, when when you're going into it, it's like probably going to be a shit card. Like no real good names on it. That's when they end up being real fun, you know? So it's like... Yeah. But that's going to bring us into the last segment of the day, as always. Good old part of who's that fighter? Let's go. Alrighty, alrighty. Let me get this shit pulled up. I told Kate this earlier. I think uh, I think this is gonna be one where you guys can get all of them this week. I think it was a bit easier. Mm-hmm. It was kind of hard picking them this week. <laughs> Opening this back up, the, the group chat, <laughs> and the first thing I see is Angie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but alrighty. You guys ready? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. First one. Who's that fighter? <sighs> Very basic picture. Yeah, it's so basic. Like, it's so basic that I feel like it could actually be anybody. <laughs> and that doesn't make it, like... This is definitely, like, I thought would be the most of a mix-up, but I thought that you guys would still probably be able to figure it out. Um, And this is the one that I got because you saw <laughs> the other one. Oh, so you had to switch out <laughs> with this one? <laughs> yeah, it was the last-minute one. Miller was short hair. <laughs> Uh, who are you thinking? Who are you thinking? I don't know. Okay, because you know what's really like throwing me off is it looks like like the head is real smooth, so it's looking real fucking bald, and like there's no indication to like what type of hair possibly. You know what I mean? I'm like I don't know. Like it's. I have no idea. <laughs> Let's just go short hair Jim. Short hair Jim? Yeah. Jinji! Yo, why'd you send me the old uh, UFC logo instead of a fighter? But, uh, no, I'm going with Kai. That's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> it's either Kai or Ramir. <laughs> okay, because I was thinking Kai too, but I don't know. Like I said, the hair just looks so fucking bald. That's the yeah. problem. <laughs> I said it to Kay. I was like this. So she saw like, because I I was working on one and like my uh, computer like went to sleep. And then when I opened it back up, it put like, it just moved it on the screen. So Kate saw the one I was working on. So I had to do like a quick pick at like the last minute. Um, But Kate said Jim Miller with short hair. You say Kai. The correct answer is. It's probably Kai. Jamie Malarkey. Oh, wow. What a load of malarkey, eh? I thought the head shape would kind of, like... But then that's after the thing, I was honestly, looking at it, so I was generic. Like, I was kind of looking at main card, too, though. So, like, with that, I was just like... I don't I gotcha. know. I, Jim Miller I just, is more awkwardly shaped than Kai, which is why I went Jim over Kai. I didn't realize that it was going to be all over the place, because I know that, like, you usually try to stay to the main card. Yeah, so it, I, I didn't even go down and look at him. Yeah... My bad. No, that's okay. I just, I just kind of, I, yeah, I forgot he was on the card. Like, I did not even, like, give him any type of fucking, like, no. thought. Because, like, now, like, it makes sense. Like, now, uh-huh. like, yeah. I just, I, with the hair being so either short or bald, I'm like, it's gotta be one of these two, because this doesn't make sense for, like, anyone else. Like, that head shape just kind of looks like it could be Kai or someone, but I don't know. I gotcha. Well, that was definitely the trickiest one. This next one, I'll say, is by far the easiest one. Mm. Number two, who's 
that fighter. Bruce Leroy. <laughs> Bruce Leroy? <laughs> no, it's a... Uh... <laughs> Hi, car friends. It's Bruce Lee. Really. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I knew that that was gonna be an easy one. Um, yeah, good old Brucey. All right, you guys ready for the last one? No. No. Nah. We'll get ready. Number three. Who's that later? Now that one is Kai. Is that your guess? No, hold on. Aw, oh, damn. Don't go dark. Yeah, I think it's Kai. Give me more No. <laughs> <laughs> Kai, car friends. <laughs> mm, correct answer is... Kai, car friends. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that angry looks picture. So fucking, yeah, I was gonna say, he looks so fucking angry. <laughs> It's so funny. I know. I was going. I was just like, all right, I have to do Kai. And then I looked him up, and that was like one of the first pictures. He's just standing there, straight arms, just angry. I was like, oh, that's so funny. I was like, I got it. Like, oh, that's perfect. (laughs) Oh man, but let's go. Another edition of Who's That Fighter? Another episode of the podcast in the books. Let's go. I hope everyone had fun watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed talking with you fucks like (laughs) I do every week. But if you did like it, like it, you know, click the little button. Maybe hit the subscribe button. That was so fucking corny. No one's going to like it now simply because of that. Maybe are going to sit through this whole thing, enjoy it, hear that, and be like, fuck these people. Maybe, you know, click the little drop down to the description and look through all those links and check out some other shit that we're doing, you know? But other than that, (laughs) peace. (laughs) So corny.